When is the best time to take rose cuttings? We're gonna find out. First of all, hit that like button, subscribe, and check out the website down below and you can get access to everything I do around here. All right, let's get on with the show. So when is the best time to take rose cuttings? Well, my personal opinion is right now. And we're gonna actually do something a little bit different in this video today. We're gonna root a rose cutting. So I'm gonna show you guys how easy this is and not just how easy it is, but when we're gonna take the cutting and when the best time is for you to take your rose cuttings. Now people take rose cuttings almost year round. You can take them in the summertime as semi hardwood cuttings. You can take them a little further into the fall when the wood starts hardening off even more before it goes dormant. And you can also take them as hardwood cuttings. We've done several types on this channel and I'll put links to all those videos down below in the description. However, today I wanna to talk about when I think the absolute best time is for real good rooting success for you guys. And that is when the cutting is in an active state of growth, but it's just started to harden off. And there's one really good way to tell when that is. And it's this, when the bloom starts to fade. So this is that original rose that we took the cutting from a few years ago and did that video, the Blue Girl Rose. And I did a little update on this in a previous episode here. But you can see right now that it is in an active state of growth. It's July 25th today, so it's been growing for a while and the wood is semi-firm. It is not soft at all and wilting over. It is starting to firm up really nicely. And if you look at the top here, the bloom has faded. Now, my favorite time to take these cuttings for just tons of root growth is in the summer or even a little earlier if your rose started earlier. It's really going to depend on your climate or if you have it in a greenhouse, but it really depends on how mature that new growth is. This growth started a little later because we had a long, cold and wet spring, but here we are. It's semi-firm wood. It's in an active state of beautiful, awesome growth and the bloom has faded. Now you can take them when the bloom is just starting to fade. I've done that on other cuttings or after it's faded completely, but this is a prime state for taking cuttings. So the first thing you wanna do is get a pot filled with whatever rooting medium you like. This is finely ground fir bark. I'll put a link down to a video below all about rooting mediums. So we're gonna grab some of this fir bark here. I wanna make sure it's broken up here and nice and loose and airy. We're gonna fill this pot. All right, the next thing we wanna do is just get this medium moistened really well. I wanna run that water through there. This drains good, so I can't overwater this stuff to begin with. All right, so we've got everything set up and I'm gonna take this cutting right here. It's the most robust, it's very large. I've got probably a good quarter inch here at the stock and I'm gonna come just below a leaf node and snip that right there. And then at those bud sites is where the highest concentration of undifferentiated cells are that can turn into roots. All right, so then we're gonna strip all these leaves off of it up to a certain point, and that's as high as I wanna go on this. I want the most robust wood, and I want it to be about a quarter inch down here at the base. There's only one little thorn because this thing's been growing so fast, so I don't have to take off too much. Then I'm gonna snip just above, let's go up above here first. And now I can kind of take a look at this guy and see what we're gonna do. I'm gonna snip some leaves off here. I don't need all those leaves. I wanna leave a few leaves on to help with photosynthesis that will help make sugars to create roots for the rose. And now that I'm looking at it, I think I'm gonna go right above. And now we've got our rose cutting. It's probably close to a foot long, 10 inches maybe. It's got a couple little leaves on top of it. It's about a quarter inch at the base, cut right below a leaf node, and it's just prime for sticking into a medium and rooting. So the next thing we're gonna do is I like to shave just a tiny little bit of the bark material off the side. It just opens up the cambium in there so that more rooting hormone can get in there and form roots. Thank you, Henry. So then we'll wanna take our rooting hormone and dip into that. This is just Hormidin 3. You can use any rooting hormone that you have on hand. It doesn't really matter. These roses in this condition with this nice of wood will root like crazy. 
The last thing we're going to do is spray this cutting and the pot with an antifungal spray. I didn't used to do this, but because I got so many people saying my cutting turned black and rotted, I started doing this for you guys. Roses are susceptible to fungus. And so if you spray with just a little bit of an antifungal solution before you stick the cutting, then it will help prevent any kind of fungal issues. And I spray a little on the top of the medium that will rinse down in and help kill any fungal issues that are going on. Now we've got our dibbler. I'm just gonna dibble down a little ways into the soil, our rooting medium. We're gonna stick the cutting down in there, few inches, get that bud down in there below the medium. And that's really all there is to it. So I went ahead and firmed down this medium around the cutting so that it's touching the cutting. I didn't pack it down too tight, but I just kind of firmed it down a little bit. I'm gonna put a little bit more potting soil on top of this. So I finished filling it up with bark. I'm gonna do one last little spray with some antifungal spray here just to ensure success. And then the last step is of course, just to put some type of a little bottle or some type of a system over this that will help keep the humidity around that cutting and around those leaves. I twist this a little bit and get it down into the medium so that it's sealed up somewhat down in there. And then it stays nice and humid in here. So many of you ask, how do I water this cutting? Well, if you've done it right, you really shouldn't be watering the cutting, but this is how I keep moisture around there in the summertime when it's hot, if I see the surface of the medium drying out. I just take a watering wand and I go around the outside and just let the moisture seep in towards the middle and that's all there is to it. How often will you have to do that? Well, maybe once every other day, maybe once a day, maybe once a week. It just really depends on your climate and how cold or how hot it is there. Finally, like I said in many videos before, we're gonna place this whole setup on the north side of a building, the south side if you're on the southern hemisphere, and this will keep it out of direct sunlight. You don't ever want direct sunlight to hit this. You do want plenty of overhead skylight, blue sky, for light shining down, but you don't want direct sun to hit it or it'll cook your cutting. And that's why I like to take my rose cutting. So the exact date isn't gonna really matter so much as the condition of the wood. Today is July 25th. It might be June 25th that you do this. If you have them growing in a greenhouse that warms up months earlier, it might be May 25th. It just really depends on the climate in your area, the temperatures outside, what condition you have the plant growing in, all those kinds of variables. So we're gonna leave this right here and we'll come back when something's happened. Should be about six weeks. Did I say six weeks? So today is August 29th and it's been just barely over a month. We've already got some new changes happening to this rose. Let's take a look. So there it is. I'm not gonna dig up the roots right now. I'm just gonna pull the top off and show you. We have got some new growth coming up on this little rose cutting. And I know good things are happening down in there because all the leaves are still healthy and viable. The stem looks really green and nice. Now, just so that you know, I watered this a couple times in the very beginning during the first week. It was really hot back then. But since then, I've done nothing to it. For the last three weeks or so, it's just been sitting in here with the lid on just like so, and I haven't touched it, watered it, done anything with it. I've left the cap on all that time, and eventually it started sending up that little bit of growth. So what we're gonna do now, we don't wanna pull that off completely so fast. We're gonna do what I talked about in that last video that I did about acclimating cuttings. And we're going to just lift this little rose right up. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. And we're gonna just allow for a little more airflow underneath that cutting, just like that. So we've got a little gap right there. And then I might leave the lid on for a day or two and then take that off so that we can slowly acclimate to less humidity. There's not gonna be 100% humidity in this uh, container right now, but it's still gonna be a more humid environment than on the outside. So I've got the container back on, the lid back on, we've raised it up just a hair, We'll give it a few days, take the cap off, and then see what happens when we've acclimated it and where to go from here. All right, so it's been a couple days now since that last clip. And as you remember, that day we propped this soda bottle up on these little dowels here, these little metal stakes. 
and the next day like I said I might I ended up taking that cap off of the top and I left it for one day I came out and checked on it a couple times it still looked very good none of this was wilting back so I just left things as they were and it just continued on then the next day, which was yesterday, I believe, I ended up just taking the cap off because I noticed, or taking the whole bottle off there, I noticed that the taking the cap off had allowed this to start growing even better and it was starting to grow up out of the top of this. So I just pulled the whole bottle off and it's been fine. Here we are the day after that and all this new growth is still trying to shoot up real nice and healthy. The plant looks healthy, the leaves are not wilting. We've, the soil's starting to dry out a little. I still haven't watered this thing in a while, but there's moisture down in there. But here is what I noticed. I was looking at this the other day and we have got a little root. Is it gonna, there it goes. You see that little tiny white speck there? That's a little root coming out of the bottom and it's gonna start doing that all over this pot. So it worked. We got our little rose cutting to root on the first try. Only one I've stuck this year, and it's that blue girl variety. I'm excited that this worked out well. We saw the root coming down from the bottom. It's just gonna start exploding with root growth. Now, here's one thing, and I've said this in other videos, that I really like. Once we get to the point where we can take the humidity off of these things, it, because we know it's growing well on its own roots, it forces it to grow roots even faster and stronger. Now today is September 1st, and so we're going further into the cooler season, and things are gonna start slowing down, so being able to take that off now while we've still got some warmth is a good thing. Those roots are just gonna explode in there, seeking out water because it doesn't have humidity, and we're just sailing from here. Now, as far as fertilizer, I don't want to fertilize that now because we are headed into winter. And the last thing I want to do is trick this thing into thinking it needs to absorb all kinds of nutrients and start growing like crazy. I don't want it to put on tons of new tender growth going into winter. I want this to just kind of do what it's going to do, mellow out, sense the change in temperature and less daylight and start slowly going dormant over the winter. So this is going to go in the hoop house. But for right now, I mean, it's doing great, why change it? I'm gonna leave it right here. We're gonna give it another few weeks or a month sitting right here in the shade and just let it do whatever it's gonna do. I'm sure it'll grow just fine. In fact, let's just give this video a little more time and see if we can see more roots coming out of the bottom and more development from the top growth of this beautiful rose. And you'll see it all in one video. Here we go. So today is September 7th and it's starting to get a little bit cooler out here. This guy is growing like crazy. You can see where that new little bud took off and it's already probably getting close to a foot tall there. So I'm just gonna take this and move it into the hoop house and just give it a little add protection as we go into cooler weather. And I should add that when I talk about cooler weather, it's really still pretty warm. We're up into the 80s during the days here still, but Really, it's just so much easier to water in here because I'm watering everything else. I don't have to go behind the pole barn and do it. And it does add a couple degrees since I rolled the side down in here, which will give it a little bit more warmth to just keep growing those crazy roots in there before we get to winter so I can show them off to you guys. We've arrived. Today is September 14th. We started this whole project back in July, July 26th, and it's been about seven weeks. Let's go take a look at this little rose cutting. And here she is. I am very excited to bring this to you guys. A beautiful, healthy, long stem rose growing awesome just before the fall. So look at that. We've even got a little rosebud just about to emerge. I can't wait to see that happen. Hopefully I'll catch it. I'll try to get a little picture and put it up on my Facebook site. But look at that, a beautiful rose. It's strong, it's healthy, it's doing well. As you can see, let's take a look at the roots. All right, I'm gonna pull this out of the pot. I'm gonna be very gentle about it though, because it still is trying to grow here and get established. I'm not gonna rip the roots apart, but look at this. Look at this, we've got all kinds of healthy root growth going on in there. So if you're seeing all of these kinds of signs, all of these roots, these white, young, tender, nice, healthy roots, and they're going all the way around the outside of this thing. If you're seeing that, then you know on the inside of all of this bark or potting soil or whatever you're using, you've got tons, just a 
a web of roots growing inside all of that. And this is one healthy little rose. So a lot of people ask, where do I go from here? I got the thing rooted. We're in September now. What do I do? Well, the first thing I don't recommend you do is fertilize it. If you have a cutting that's starting to get a little bit yellow because it sucked a lot of energy to get rooted, then sometimes I'll just do a light, maybe miracle grow fertilizer that's liquid so it's not long lasting through the fall and I'll just kind of perk it up a little bit. But generally speaking, I don't like fertilizing going into the winter. They don't need the nutrients at that time. They're trying to go dormant. They will lose their leaves and they're just gonna be sleeping all winter. So don't fertilize, generally speaking. Then, we already talked about this in a couple of videos ago in this series, I think it's number five, how to overwinter these plants. As long as the parent plant is cold hardy to your region, the rooted cutting is generally just as cold hardy. And so you shouldn't worry too much about it. There are some things you can do to give it some added protection, but you don't need to stress about it. So I'm gonna leave this in the hoop house. It barely gives it any protection, just from hard, fast frost, the cold winter winds. There are things you can do to give it that protection too at your house without a hoop house. Then we'll go through the winter. I will probably only water this once or twice through the entire winter because you don't wanna oversaturate these pots with water when they're not actively growing. Then in the spring, probably, I don't know, sometime in April, I'll come out and throw some slow release fertilizer on here and just start watering as we go into the spring. And over time, it will start putting up new buds and growth and looking very beautiful. And at that time as well, when I fertilize, I'll probably come back here and cut a lot of this growth off because I wanna force more branching up from the base. And I'm gonna take you over here real quick and show you our little update for today and what that looks like several years down the road because this is a clone of that blue girl rose that we did in that big video it's got like 8 million views for some odd crazy reason but this is a clone from that one and I'm going to show you that ori original rose that we did right now and how it looks several years later after pruning and growing it on all right, there's our blue girl rose. So this was not a plant that I bought at a nursery. This was that original cutting that we did in that video several years ago. And there's our update. Look at that beautiful bloom. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Now, it'll do better and better once I get it in the ground. I just haven't found the spot I wanna put it in yet. And I've wanted it to grow really strong and healthy, but check this out. This is just that little cutting that looked like this by the end of the first summer with that supple green growth. That's starting to harden off a little bit and all this kind of growth up here. But now it's several years later and it's got a nice thick woody stem in there. I've pruned it back multiple times, multiple years. And it start, look at that. It's starting to grow healthier and healthier and produce more buds and get bushier and turn into a really nice plant with strong, strong, healthy roots. You guys want to see the roots just for the heck of it? All right, so here we go. Now, I actually haven't done this. <laughs> so, I mean, look at that. We've got roots hanging out the bottom of this thing, but I actually have not pulled this out to look at roots. We've even got a rose pot. <laughs> look at that. This thing's growing out the bottom of the pot just as well. Isn't that crazy? I didn't even notice that. I could probably pull that off and uh, plant it too. And get a nice little rose plant. In fact, why don't we just do that? It's kind of late now, so I don't know if it's going to establish, but maybe I'll try to grow that little guy. That is nuts. All right, let's see if we can get this without stabbing myself with thorns. There it is. All right, we've got... A nice healthy I'm gonna lose all the soil here but we've got a nice healthy root system down in there look at that and you can see the new white roots coming out the side on the bottom it's not they're not up near the top but this is a big healthy deep growing nice rose bush what I need to do is get this thing in the ground so it can get established in soil and I'll bet it'll just take off and grow like crazy in fact I probably should do that sooner than later so here we are, healthy mama rose, and it's nice little healthy 
baby rose. Isn't that cool? This rose came from this rose. It's an identical plant. It's an identical clone to this parent plant, and it will grow with all the same traits and characteristics in a beautiful, very fragrant bloom. And look at this. We've got another one coming on as well. So there it is, we got another one in the books, a beautiful little rose cutting that just grew on and we'll be able to preserve this for future generations. I'm telling you guys, it really is possible. Don't give up on your roses, it's really fun and you can preserve these and share them with family or friends or take them onto your new property. So I hope you guys learned something from this video. I hope you liked this video. I sure had a lot of fun making it. I love making these ones where we're rooting cuttings of some of our favorite plants. So if you did like this, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to follow along and see more fantastic gardening videos. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.